Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show how to use Maple to do a graph theory problem. So to do that I'm going to call up the graph theory package. Notice that I am in math mode when I type that in and when I hit enter something happened. There was an executable command here in Maple and what it did is it, it activated this package, it loaded this package of all these commands um, that I can use. And I don't want to see all of this blue output because it's a bit messy. So I'm going to suppress the output with a colon. Okay, so that's good. Things are working, but I don't want to see all that messy stuff. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is define my graph. So I'm going to do that by setting the letter G to be the name of my graph. I could have called the graph Kathy or, uh, you know, Mr. Brown. Whatever I want to call the graph, you can just put it there to the left. I called it G. The next thing I did is I used a colon and an equal sign. And that's very important if you want um, this object to be a variable or something that you're going to do more uh, computation with, you need to use the colon with the equal sign. So, you know, instead of setting G equal to a number like 7 or a fraction or something, I'm going to set G equal to a graph. And so I need to tell Maple what the graph consists of. And the way I'm going to do that is by telling it where the edges are. All right, so first of all, the graph, I need to open a set of parentheses, and at the very end, I close the set of parentheses. I then need to give it a set of edges. So because it's a set, I need curly brackets open and close on the very end. Now, the contents here are going again to be sets of vertices which define the edge. So I need another open curly bracket. My first vertex is going to be cat and that's going to be connected to the vertex Ben. Close curly bracket. So there's an edge. I've got two vertices. The edge goes between them. Next I've got a pair of vertices and the edge between them. Open curly bracket cat comma dry close curly bracket and I continue on in that fashion. All right, so Maple thinks it understands me. It told me that it's a graph. Uh, it's undirected, unweighted. I've got four vertices and four edges. That's definitely true and what I was trying to accomplish. But let's take a look at what the graph looks like. And there it is. Um, this is exactly what I was thinking about. I plopped down uh, four different words on paper and I connected them if they didn't share any letters in common. So you can see uh, cat and car are not connected because they share letters in common. But anyways, that's a lovely graph. Now we might want to color the graph and when we talk about graph coloring, we're really talking about um, how many colors do we need how many, what's the minimum number of colors, in fact, that we need to color the graph so that there's no collisions, so that so the vertices that are adjacent don't share the same color. You know, it's like going to a party and somebody else has got the same outfit on you do, you want to avoid that. Same thing in the graph. You don't want your neighbor the same color as you. So we are trying to avoid collisions of colors. So you might want to see how many colors. Could you do it with two? three, four, what is the minimum number of colors we need? Well, that actually has a mathematical term and it's called the chromatic number. And this is a command in Maple. Uh, notice that I'm capitalizing the C in chromatic and the N in number, and that's important, chromatic number. I'm in math mode and I'm gonna ask Maple, what's the chromatic number of graph G? And it tells me three. And automatically, you know, I can start to see why I would need three colors because this little triangle over here, I definitely am going to need three colors there um, because two colors would result in some sort of collision. And then for car, I can probably recycle one of the colors I already used, obviously not the one on Ben, but um, I can see where this is going. So let's try to uh, color our graph so we can really see a nice visualization of these colors in action. To do that, we've got two steps. First, define the colors, and step two, redraw the graph. 
Okay, so if you are digging around in Maple and you want to figure out how to do these things, you can always go up to the help menu, pull out some sample code, copy paste it, and change it to fit your problem. Um, and I've basically done that for the highlight vertex command here. Uh, I'm going to highlight a vertex in graph G, and actually I'm going to do two of them the same color. Car and cat, I'm going to color them dodger blue. I'm in math mode, I'm going to hit enter. All right, let's do that again. I just copy paste it and now let's choose another vertex like Ben and I'll make that red. Hit enter. And then let's do dry and we'll make that one green. And again, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I am copy pasting and editing code. That is totally fine to do, at least in this context. And nothing happened. Well, of course nothing happened. We have to redraw the graph now. This is step two. Notice that I'm in text mode. I need to be in math mode to get these computational or executable commands to actually uh, do something. So let's draw graph and we want to draw graph G. And there we have the beautiful colors.